Hi everybody, it's Miss Ward and Lavender here, and we're here for the last lesson of chapter four. So lesson 4.4, explaining what Psy will see. Let's get started. So we should be able to answer this question by the end of today's lesson. Why does the sun follow the same pattern in the sky every day? Why? Let's find out. So we need to think back to this chart. Do you guys remember this chart? We've been using this chart to record what we've figured out. So can you guys look at this chart really carefully and just point to the screen? What are some of the things we've added to the chart so far? And can you tell me why we added those things? What do you notice? Did somebody out there point to the sun? How about the stars? What is that arrow on there saying? Yeah, that the earth spins. Does anybody out there remember what the dots mean? What is the blue dot saying? What about the black dot? So if the blue dot tells us that it's day, and the black dot tells us that in that part of the earth it's nighttime, what have we figured out about why the sun follows the same pattern in the sky every day? Can you guys tell me what we've learned about that? Why does the sun follow that same pattern in the sky every day? Yeah, so what we've learned is that the sun follows the same pattern in the sky every day because the earth spins one full time every day. So we should have enough information now to answer Sai's question. Let's give it a shot. So remember, as scientists, we write to communicate. There's all these things that scientists do and one thing that we do is we write in order to communicate. So we're gonna to write to Sai to tell him what we learned. So Sai's question was, what will Sai see in the sky when he calls his grandma tomorrow? So let's answer that question. So if we remember, Sai saw the sun low in the sky when he called his grandma in the evening, just before his bedtime. This picture shows what Sai saw in the sky. So Sai wants to know what he'll see in the sky when he calls his grandma in the evening tomorrow. Can you guys take a second and talk to your buddy and tell your buddy what Sai will see in the sky when he calls his grandma in the evening tomorrow? Talk to your buddy. So I'm gonna write down what I heard you say. In the evening tomorrow, you will see the sun low in the sky, right? So we're gonna tell Sai that he's gonna see the sun low in the sky. So now that we've told Sai what he's gonna see, now we need to tell him why he he's gonna see that, okay? So here's the next question I want you to talk to your partner about. What should we tell Sai about why he'll see the sun low in the sky again tomorrow? Why do we know he's gonna see that? Go ahead, talk to your partner. Did I hear somebody say, because the earth spins. Yeah, so let's write that as a full sentence. Let's read it together. You will see the sun low again because earth will spin all the way around and you'll be facing the same direction again. Woo, we just finished writing our explanations to Sai. Now let's read the whole explanation again. All right, here we go. In the evening tomorrow, you 
We'll see the sun low in the sky. You will see the sun low again because Earth will spin all the way around and you will be facing the same direction again. Woo! Nice work! You guys, we've figured out so many new ideas about what we see in the sky day after day. Let's reflect really quickly on what we've learned. So I'd like you to grab your partner again, okay? And tell them at least one idea that you've learned, okay? So I would tell Lavender one idea I learned and then Lavender would tell me what she heard and then Lavender would tell me one idea that she learned and I would tell her what I heard, okay? Go ahead, talk to your partner about one thing you've learned so far from this unit. So we're going to do our Mount Nose activity one more quick time to show the directions Earth faces throughout the day as it spins to help us really remember where the sun is in the sky. All right, let's do the Mount Nose role play. So your head represents the Earth, your nose is Mount Nose, the screen is going to be the sun, and normally I use the sun puppet. I tried to do this while holding the puppet and I just, I kept messing it up. So instead I put, I put a sun on the slide so I don't have to hold the puppet. And then I have a stars card behind me, but even if you don't have a stars card, anytime you're not looking at the screen, you can imagine that there's stars behind you. So let's try this together. So if here's Mount Nose, right? Where should you be facing so that the sun looks like it's low in the sky? So stand somewhere where it looks like the sun is low in the sky. So let's see, if I'm looking at the sun just like this, then the sun looks like it's high in the sky because it's way up, right? But if I go this way, then the sun looks like it's low in the sky. Can you guys stand where the sun is low in the sky? That would be morning. So now which way would we spin to show the sun in the afternoon, right? So in the afternoon, the sun is really high in the sky. So I would spin this way, right? So stand so the sun is high in the sky, so it's like afternoon. And then which way would I go to show it's evening, right? So I keep spinning till I see it low in the sky again, but over there. And that would be evening. Do you guys see what we're doing? So let's put it all together. We know that the earth is always spinning. So as you spin, slowly think about when it's morning, when it's afternoon, when it's evening, and when it's nighttime. I'm not gonna spin this time so I can hold up the sun. So here's the sun. Can you guys spin slowly around to show one day? Morning, afternoon, evening, and nighttime. We've got one more thing today and then we're done. And that's making a mini book. Scientists draw and write to communicate what they've learned. So we're gonna all write a mini book to communicate what we've learned. We've got a lot of choices on this though. So you guys need to find the choice that makes the most sense for you. If you have a copy of this mini book, then 
What you might want to do is pause this video now and go through and do the mini book on your own before you see what Lavender did in her mini book so it can really be your ideas. So you might want to do that if you have a copy of it. If you don't have a copy of the mini book, then you probably want to watch the rest of this video and then you can make your own uh, mini book on your own with just a blank piece of paper, okay? The other thing you can do is you can make the mini book and then after you make it, you can check and see what Lavender did so you can compare what you created to what Lavender created. But you have a lot of choices on this, okay? Just do whatever makes you feel the best, okay? So I'm going to share with you what Lavender did in her mini book. So the first thing she did is she wrote her name, Lavender. So you guys are going to do that too. Write your name. Let's read page one together. The square shows the place where we live, where Lavender lives. And the heart shows where someone else lives. So Lavender was thinking about her friend Tempest. And Tempest lives on the other side of the earth from her. So that's why she was thinking about Tempest. Tempest is just here for a visit now, okay? So the heart is where someone else lives and the square is where you live. And Lavender wrote, I live in one place on earth. You live in another place. And Lavender even colored hers in and she wrote the word Seattle to show that that's where Lavender is. You can also do that. Here, you're going to draw what we see in the sky from where we live on Earth and what someone else sees in the sky from a different place on Earth. So Lavender wrote, when I see the sun, and she drew a sun, you see the stars. And you see she drew some stars too. Notice the hearts on this. They show that when the place on Earth where someone else lives, so where Tempest lives, right, is facing the sun and when it's not facing the sun. So as the earth spins, your place on earth will face the sun. And so here's where it's facing the sun. Then your place on earth will not face the sun. There are two horizon pictures also. You're going to draw what that someone else sees in the sky when their part of the earth is facing the sun and when it's not. So here's the facing the sun part. So you will see it change from daytime and see the sun show it's daytime to nighttime. And what did Lavender draw to show that it's nighttime? Do you see her little stars? The top picture shows which way Earth is facing right now. In the circle, you will draw which way the Earth will be facing at the same time tomorrow. So let me read to you what Lavender wrote. Every day Earth spins one time. Right now, your place on Earth is facing the sun. At the same time tomorrow, your place on Earth will... So at the same time tomorrow, where is their place on earth gonna do? What is it gonna do? Is it gonna face the sun or away from the sun? Yeah, face the sun. So then where did she draw her heart for the same time? So if it's the same time as it was this time, where would she draw that heart? Can you point to the screen? Yeah, did you point to the same spot? That's where she put it in the same spot because if it's the same time, it's gonna be the same spot. Here, you'll draw what someone in another place on Earth sees in the sky right now and what they'll see at the same time tomorrow. So, right now, you see the stars, right? Because we see the sun. So, these, these people, or Tempest, sees the stars. At the same time tomorrow, you will see stars in the sky, right? 
So at the same time, they see stars in the sky. So remember, we can use our word wall back here behind us, and I'll zoom in on that, um, and that should help you. If you have the packet, I also included all of our words in there that you can use, but let me zoom in real quick on our word wall so you can see that. Okay guys, good luck with your mini books. Bye.